This technology should be used with caution. Always provide notice when distributing machine learning generated content. Welcome to part three of my three part series for how to create an automated blog. In this video, I'm going to take you through the final product and some of the web app code that you would need to get this working on your website. So I'm going to start by switching my screens and I'll take you through. So you can see here, this is my website. If I go to the top right here, I've got a blog section. I only have the automated blog right now, but I might be adding a normal blog at some point in the future. But anyways, the current state is if I click on this blog, it'll take me to my automated blog page. And all of these blog posts will list out here. So far, there's only been two generated. But as I mentioned in the previous two videos, this thing will run every night. Uh, actually, in this case, it's every morning. And create one blog post. So as more and more blog posts get added, this page will infinite scroll, loading each of the blog posts in chunks as I scroll down the page. So you'll see I just scrolled down a little bit and the loading thing went away because there's no more blog posts to load. So let's just click into one of these. You'll notice that I have this fake icon next to all of these. I always want to label my automated content as being fake because I don't want to spread more misinformation. And that's something that I would highly recommend doing for any project that you use automated content with. So let's click into one of these here. You'll see we've got the title of the blog post. Again, I'm mentioning that it's a fake blog here. And if you watched uh, video one, you would know that this title came from a real article. And so you'll see that I actually link back to the original article here. So you can see if I click on it, it'll take me to the original article. So I can go back. And I've also got another disclaimer just to be totally sure uh, that says this blog is fully automated, unmonitored, and does not re reflect the views of myself. The ML model may produce content that is offensive to some readers. So because it's fully automated and I have no checks in place for what content it's generating, like for example, I don't have checks for any swear words or anything like that, or any checks for what it says at all really, it could come up with some pretty crazy stuff. So I just have that disclaimer there uh, to make sure that people know what they're getting themselves into when they read this. So first thing you'll notice uh, apart from those disclaimers is I've got an image here and I just want to talk about it for a second. So I'm using Unsplash for this web app, but there's specific language in their terms of use that say you cannot use Unsplash for automated content. And I went directly to Unsplash and got an exemption for this video for the education purposes. So if you want an exemption, you cannot just do it for education purposes. You have to go to them and ask them for an exemption directly for your specific application. So I just want to be super clear. If you're using this for anything other than education purposes, or if you're using Unsplash at all with this technology, you must go to them specifically for an exemption. You cannot just do it because I have an exemption. So now that I'm done talking about that, let's go down. So we've got all this content here fully generated by the model. So we can go through a little bit of it because some of it's kind of funny. Um, actually, this one's uh, this one's not too crazy, actually. So you'll notice that it actually talks about real people. It makes reference to real people because our prompt is related to AI and machine learning. So you're actually going to see that there's some pretty prominent names in machine learning that are mentioned here. So it's talking about Yashua Bengio, and, but then it says uh, University of Montreal AI Lab, and then it goes on talking about partnering with DeepMind, and then it talks about Toronto's Royal University, which doesn't exist. So some of the stuff might be true, and some of the stuff 
isn't true, and that's kind of what might make it convincing. But it's interesting nonetheless. So, and then it, it uh, you'll also notice that it can go off on tangents. So, depending on how much context you give the model, and the amount of context you can give it, kind of depends on how many resources you give the model, uh, compute resources. So it'll have a bigger context window or a smaller context window, uh, depending on what your settings are. And now I have a pretty decent size context window, but you'll still notice that over time it kind of loses context and starts changing topics. So you'll see the line here. It starts talking about the book also discusses Big Bang Theory and its impact on physics, as well as the idea that the universe became stable at the moment of creation. So it's kind of like going on tangents, and I don't know, I find it pretty funny, but um, yeah, it's feel free to read through all of this. I'm not going to read through this whole thing right now, but I think it turned out pretty well, and I'm pretty happy with uh, the content that it's generating. So I'll probably have more follow-up videos talking about, I don't know, like whether or not this did anything for my SEO for my website, see if it's getting search results. Uh, I have a feeling that it might not. I feel like Google's ranking algorithms might already be taking into context uh, whether or not something looks like it's machine generated. So we'll see. If they haven't yet, I assume that they will because this is going to get more and more common. So don't expect this to necessarily boost your SEO rankings, but I'll have a follow-up video to explore that a little deeper. So let's go over to the code now, just to show you the pieces involved in getting this specific page up and running uh, with my next JS website hosted on Versal. So let's go over there now. You'll see there's five different files associated with this implementation. And I'll take you through them briefly. So the first one, I have an automated blog API uh, path. And this is going to create a serverless function to run some API code. It's just a really easy way to get basic APIs up and running so that you can make requests to resources that are restricted access. So in this case, I've got a Google service key because I need to connect to the uh, Google Cloud storage. And then we've also got our Unsplash keys and then some interfaces just because we're using TypeScript. And then we've got a few different endpoints. So the first one, we have get image. And this is for getting our images for the Unsplash API, from the Unsplash API. And then we've got get posts, which is going to get all of the blog posts that we uploaded to the Google Cloud storage bucket. And if I come down, these endpoints are abstracted. So only one of these API endpoints is exposed to the public, and that is the, uh, the get post one. So I have no way of accessing this get image endpoint uh, that's public facing, just the get post one. And that would be accessed through the automated blog post request endpoint. So all of this runs on AWS Lambda, I'm pretty sure, is how Versal does it in the back end. But you really don't have to uh, worry about deploying any of that stuff. If you have the pages API directory structure and then a file, it's going to create an endpoint automatically as long as you've got this export default. Um, so that'll be the endpoint that's targeted. So next thing here, we've got the automated blog page here, which is just an abstraction to allow us to get our server-side props, because this automated blog page, which is 
this here, this page is server side rendered because I want it or because I'm updating it frequently. And so I want all these options to show up. And then when you click on one of these options, it will statically generate, if it hasn't already been statically generated, the actual blog post page. So that's going to help a lot with cutting costs, essentially, but also speeding up your uh, responses, your web server responses. So you're going to get your pages to load faster. And then if we come back here, so that's, that's why we have this get server side props function here. If I come now down to this dynamic route, we've got id.tsx under our blog, automated blog directory, and that's going to create the individual blog post pages. So if I look here, we've got get static props because now we're doing static uh, generation for this page. And that's just our type. So you can see the actual function here. And we're doing a call to both the get posts, which was the public endpoint. But we're just importing the code here because, uh, well, that's just one of the th ways that the, I guess the compiler works for Next.js. It doesn't want you to use the public endpoint within this get static props code because this get static props code is already running on the server side. And then we've also got our get image, which is again, getting our unsplash image. And we're passing all of this into the actual page. And we also have to use this get static paths function to generate the different um, paths for our website for each of the blog posts. And all of this is just abstracted and passed to this post page, which is what you see right here. So you can see we've got our disclaimers here and we've got um, the actual content in this section here. And we've got our time created, and we're dangerously setting the inner HTML after sanitizing it so that we can uh, get the text to show up pretty decently. And there's one other point I wanted to show. We've got, let's see. Actually, no, that, that's fine for this page. So the other page, the final page, was the actual blog post listing page. And that's this one here. So pretty simple. This is actually calling the public get posts endpoint. So you can see we're using this fetch and then we're hitting our API slash automated blog with our post request. And we're using pagination so that we can infinitely load all the content. And what else do we have here? So this is just the infinite scroll. We're using an actual component called React Infinite Scroll Component. If you're interested, you can look that up. Um, so I think that basically covers it. I hope that this was interesting to you. I hope that what I showed you here is good enough for you to get going on your own web implementations. I didn't really want to go through writing out the whole thing because there's tons of material online for learning different web content. And this is just one of an infinite number of ways that you could implement what we did in video one and two into your website. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.